Hello, Today Crew. Welcome back to Today Pastor by myself, Scott and Stiggy. Now, we're doing our last lap at Isleworth, where I'm actually, because I do know Isleworth reasonably well, going to give Stiggy directions as if he's on a real mock test. We'll complete the whole route, and along the way, I'm going to mark Stiggy, and we'll see at the end whether he's passed or failed his driving test. And we probably all know what's going to happen, really, but I'll do my best to try and fail him. No? Okay. All right, Stig, when you're ready and it's safe, drive on, please. Very good observations from Stig. So I'll give you live commentary as we go. All round observations. So he saw this black vehicle overtaking him before he proceeded ahead. Really nice. At the end of the road, turn left, please. Obviously, you have to go this way on your driving test at Isleworth uh, because there is no other way to go. The right is a dead end. Uh, do take caution when you exit or enter the entrance to the driving test centre as it's super narrow. At the end of the road, turn left, please, Stig. All right, nice, good mirrors and signals. Shortly after I've given him the directions, he's done his mirrors, done his signal, and that is the order that you want to. Look at the position that sticks in. It's really nice, twisting, following the curve to the left, not taking the opposite position like the other vehicle in front. That would confuse road users. So if you're turning left, follow the curve, stick to the left. Uh, no directions given, stick. I want you to follow the road ahead if it's safe to do so. Really nice, good internal mirror there I saw for the stick. So he's slowing down to let the lady cross, and he's checked to see who's behind him. Brilliant double check onto the right-hand side of the roundabout to see if he had a safe opportunity to proceed, as we need to stop and give priority to traffic on the right at roundabouts. Now, we have a 30-mile-an-hour road here, so Stiggy goes a bit quick. That's entirely his prerogative. If he wants to... Give me a bumpy ride on the speed bump since he's car. I can do what he likes. I can punish <laughs> he can punish me if he wants to. Okay, um, but for your driving test, if you want to take this road at 20, uh, give a smoother ride. Also give yourself more time to react to oncoming traffic as it's a nasty road, as I've mentioned on all of our mock test videos here together. It's not my favorite road, but like we said, just take your time nice and gentle and it's not that bad, okay? If you're not sure like stingy's not sure just stop like stick's doing now you can see that's a big vehicle blue van park cars on both sides and on both sides of park cars are large vehicles as well at the roundabout turn left first exit please stick look immediately on his interior mirror checking his exterior left mirror signaling left absolutely amazing come on sunshine you can do it all right he's checking the traffic on the right and he's reading the body language of the car that vehicle hopefully you were able to see um there are other companies available, but you can see that on the camera. I uh, did not signal when he approached the roundabout, therefore was not actually giving us enough information to know where he was intending to go. But Stig is advanced, so he used the speed of the vehicle. He looked at the wheels and he made eye contact or at least tried to see the person driving the vehicle so that he can give a good way of assuming where that vehicle might go on all those pieces of information we just mentioned. Okay, so Stig's doing a nice slow speed here as he comes into this bend, maintaining a one meter gap from the curb line. That way he's in the correct safe position for normal driving. And now we're coming into a tighter situation. I can feel Stig starting to slow the vehicle down at the same time. He is maintaining mirror check throughout so he knows if there's any overtaking traffic and he knows who's following him so if he chooses to change speed he's doing it safely bearing in mind who might be following if the vehicles are following too close behind you must maintain a further distance from the vehicle in front so that you can do a slower braking come to a slower stop for the people that are driving a little bit recklessly following too close again nice braking there from Stig slowing down as he saw the approaching bus obviously he's going to narrow the road we can see that the oncoming vehicle is over the center line therefore it's going to re reduce the amount of space that we have making it more likely that we'll actually need to come to a slow and stop and i can't believe how good you're doing stick i really want to <laughs> you know why i want to get you right now and i know how difficult it is as well 
What I'm talking about is the speed limit. So it's a 20 mile an hour, uh, 20 mile an hour road, which is very beneficial to someone doing their driving yeah, test. Got a train of cars behind. Oh us. yeah, and he's got a queue of cars or a train. I'd call it a train as well. Cars behind. But you've got to stay to the speed limit. We haven't even heard the ding dong, which will come on when we reach the speed limit. So Stig's really accurate. At, yeah, you know where you're going. At the roundabout, turn left, please. Uh, so he's done his mirror signals, maintained the meter gap from the left, past the actual last part vehicle. Now he's following the curb. At the same time, a nice slow jogging speed to a walking speed because you're on a downhill on this roundabout. So maintain brake pressure there. He's doing his... Uh, checks on the roundabout at the same time as doing everything I just mentioned. Okay, so we're going round the part of vehicles here, maintaining that meter. But while we're doing our, our change of direction to go round the part of vehicles, again, like I said earlier on a previous video, most important mirror checks there, change of direction. So we're checking the right hand side. We may have any filtering traffic. Filtering traffic is most likely a smaller vehicle, like a motorbike or bicycle, as an example. Uh, it's quite common for a motorbike to just go whee, right down the middle of the road. Road, missing all of these narrow whip, um, speed bumps just right down the middle and if we don't check our mirrors as we're changing direction to go around the part of vehicles we will not see that motorbike filtering traffic therefore it's likely to result in an accident so make sure when you change direction super important build a habit always check your mirrors in pairs before change of direction, starting with interior mirror and then exterior mirror. We work our way to the exterior mirror last because we want to know who's on that side before we go to that side. So before we make that decision, we can see it's clear and then we know it's safe to go that way. Now, stick at the roundabout, what I'd like you to do is the fourth exit turning right. Okay, if you're not counting um, Tesco's, we are going to count Tesco's. Then it's the third exit, but fourth exit turning right, please just after Tesco's. So this is really good to mention the Tesco's. Obviously other supermarkets are available, but this Tesco's is a good landmark and a good way of knowing where your exit is. So in past one, Stig's checking his mirrors, internal, external mirrors at every exit he's passing, especially at the exit before the one you want, which is the correct time for showing the exit signal. So a perfect roundabout from Stig there, mirrors, signal, position, speed, look on the entry. Once he had reached the point where he was exiting the roundabout, mirrors and signals and maneuver off the roundabout. Really good punctual signals, good timing on the signals, plenty of practice obviously will make to you doing those roundabouts perfectly every time. That routine that I mentioned, the mirror signal position speed look routine, is something I never did, I, even though I was I was told to do it many times. I'm a bit thick like that, so it didn't really go through that thick head. Um, but eventually it sunk in, and once I started doing it, it was easy. So I wish I did it sooner. Uh, right, what I'd like to do is keep following the road ahead, please. Stay at the traffic lights. Shortly after, I'm going to ask you to follow the signs towards M3. So just straight through this junction. See the sign here for M3, Stiggy? I'd like you to follow the sign towards M3, please. So what I'm doing with Stig is he's independent driving now on his exam, and that's roughly 20 minutes. It can be done with using a sat-nav, which is generally a lot easier. Uh, we're going to be doing it with following the signs, which is usually harder, as it builds, for me, from my experience, builds the anxiety levels. I feel like I haven't seen the sign, because signs are very far and few between. You feel like you've missed something. When you have the sat-nav, you have a constant reminder of where you're going with a visual aid, and and also you have the audio aid for the um, sat nav telling you where to go. Sometimes it even tells you how far away. You can read the distance on the sat nav. If you look at the top, you'll see the banner. And in the banner, it will tell you where you're turning and how far that turning is, which is very good for you to sort of know, but then time your mirror signal position speed look routine. It just adds to you being more confident and knowing where you are, which is an excellent piece of information. But if you're not and you're following signs, ask your examiner. They will try to help you by saying other signs a bit further down 
or you haven't missed it or something along these lines. Maybe even give you direction. So you can have a two-way conversation with your examiner if you choose to do so. Okay, so we're taking the third exit turning right. We're in the right lane, signaling right. You can see the first exit here. Now look at this. After the first exit, we almost want to start to spiral to the middle. Stig's done that. Checking his mirrors, doing his signal, and he's in the left lane because he spiraled very early. The actual design of these roundabouts is around. It's more oval. I said this on a previous video, especially that one. And that oval point at the end creates a very tight, tight turn between exit two and three. So as you pass exit one, you almost want to go into the middle lane so that you're already in this left lane as it becomes left lane towards the third exit. If you're not too sure what I said, rewind the video, have a look, and exactly what you see is exactly how you'd like to do that roundabout for your driving test at Green Isleworth. Okay, we're on the dual carriageway now, and the speed limit on this road is 40. We have constant reminder signs, so if you're not sure of the speed limit, keep looking for speed limits. Stig does have that displayed on his dashboard. You might also have a speed limit sign displayed on your sat-nav, if you're using your sat-nav on your driving test. However, we've said this before in previous videos, and I'll say it one last time, don't rely on the technology, continue to keep looking for uh, road signs, street signs, so you know exactly what the speed limit is. The speed limits can change, technology takes time to update, and you might miss out on that time that has changed on an update, and therefore, if you're doing a driving test, you'd fail, or if you're in real life, you get a ticket for speeding. Okay, this has happened, it's a true story. I know somebody driving to work, student's dad actually, driving to work, uh, road's 50, but this day they changed it to 40. So you got one ticket going to work and one ticket going back. There you go. Years of doing the same route, you're programmed, and that one day it changes, and you get two speeding tickets in one day. Okay, so uh, Stig, I'd like you to tell me, how would you check to see that your headlights and taillights are working? Turn them on. Good. Walk around and check. Perfect. Nice, simple answer. Turn them on, walk around and check. Thank you very much. Uh, keep your answers short and sweet. Don't embellish them. Don't try to give too much information. Examiners don't really want it, to be honest and uh, it's pointless really. You just want to get the message across to the examiner. Now these roadworks have been here at the hospital bridge roundabout for at least six months probably. Um, I don't know how much longer they're going to be here, but we're going to be in the correct lane that we need for where I'm asking Stig to go to, which is M3. So Stig's probably already seen that, although he's got more inside knowledge of this test center than I do. He knows exactly where he's going, from the test center. Um, but if you don't, look at the sign. You can see M3 from here. It's just over the top of the cars. So at the top, nice straight line. We're going straight ahead. More often than not, you're gonna use the left lane to go straight. If you're not sure, leave a gap like Stig's doing between him and the car in front so you can see if there's any road markings. There's a few signs here telling us we've got to use this lane because of the road works on this occasion, but yet we're talking about road markings, and if you're not sure, use the left lane, go straight. If you find yourself in a left-only lane, do not panic on your driving test. Make sure you commit to the left-only and you go left-only. This is disregarding sat-nav directions from your examiner. You're in a left-only lane, you must go left regardless of any other directions given. It's highway code, it's mandatory. If you're in a left-only lane, you have to go left. You will pass your driving test if you do that, but if you break road markings, you will get a serious fault for road markings and you will fail your driving test. That is how important that message is. Okay, so Stiggy, you know we're going towards M3, you know where that is, and we're going straight ahead. Now, please do look at the road markings through the road works at signs so that you can see what's going on here. See the straight arrow, that's what the road markings say straight. Stig knows he can use this lane to go straight. He's doing plenty of mirror checks now to see who's around him. He's holding his lane discipline. He's timed his mirrors and signals for the exit correctly once he past the first exit, mirrors and signals, timing, well done for the exit. Absolutely fantastic. Now Stig, I'm going to ask you to follow signs towards Heathrow, please. Heathrow. So you'll see a sign coming up on the left, and I'd like you to do your best to go towards Heathrow, please. You might see the little icon of a plane. So there are lots of test centers around here. I accidentally said one earlier, Greenford. 
South Hall, Isleworth, they do all use signs towards Heathrow. Different junctions, but still following signs towards Heathrow. Absolutely fantastic. Showing me as an examiner, Stig knows where he's going because he's done his mirrors early, done his signal early. So as an examiner, I can relax knowing that he's taken that information in and he's acting on it accordingly. At the roundabout, I'd like you to take the fourth exit turning right, please, Stig. Fourth exit turning right. Can you see the sign up there towards Heathrow? Absolutely fantastic. So we're still following signs towards Heathrow. Amazing, done his mirrors, done his signals really early. I'm so glad that on our videos, see the pedestrians on this pedestrian crossing, every time I come here, no one's really there using the crossing. Today they are, and there's a huge brick wall here on our right which hides the pedestrians from that side. So do exercise caution, that pedestrian crossing can be used. Make sure that you know it's there and you stop early if you need to because someone's using the crossing. Right, this junction here, incredibly busy, or this roundabout, incredibly busy. We're doing the fourth exit turning right. The first exit you're not going to see. It's just on the left here off the actual image. And what you can see now is the second exit signposted Kingston. Stig's time to do his mirror checks as he's passing every exit doing the mirror checks. He's timing his signal correctly as he's passed the first exit. He's checking mirrors thoroughly. He's probably checked mirrors about 10 times. He's checked mirrors on the right hand side now because he knows that the bus will probably be there. Seen the pedestrian at the pedestrian crossing. Addressed his speed so early the pedestrian feels really confident to walk out of that crossing. The crossing is two crossings because there is an island in the middle. Stig's having to wait because now this gentleman's reached the middle, so he must wait until people have finished his half of the crossing. An island in the middle at a pedestrian crossing means it's two separate crossings. You only need to wait for people using your side of the crossing. Okay, this is a very long road. I'm gonna ask Stig a show me question on this road. Okay, Stig's not doing a bad idea because he knows as well as I do there's most likely buses at these bus stops or parked cars. And in fact, I'm actually going to ask him to turn right further down the road. So Stig, at the second set of traffic lights, I'd like you to turn right. I will repeat that direction when we get closer. In the meantime, can you show me how you'd wash your front window using the wipers and washers, please? Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Stig. And then just to repeat the directions, it's the second set of traffic lights turn right. Okay, so that's the first set coming up, second set turn right. Okay, so what I've taken into account for some blue flashing lights that I saw, um, not our first hazard, however, this car is. Stig's done a very good decision there of actually going around the parked car. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to go, we're going to go round the police cars here. This is an interesting situation. So this happened on your test. Your examiner will be telling you exactly what to do here, which is exactly what Stig's doing. Obviously, because he's so advanced in driving, I don't need to tell him what to do. He's done exactly what he needs to do. Uh, he's in the middle of the junction now, so we've just gone round the police cars. We've got a nice space here to wait. We're waiting until we have a safe opportunity to cross the junction. Stig's looked ahead. He's seen that there's an oncoming vehicle, but it's very far away. It's a safe opportunity to now complete the turn. Stig complete the turn. Immediately after, we had a stop line, separate set of traffic lights. Stig checked the traffic light color. It was green. He's gone. He's faced with a zebra crossing straight away after. Notice the pedestrian crossing. It's one complete crossing because there's no island in the middle. Stig took talked about this on a previous video, this bicycle lane has a solid line, so you must not enter that bus lane, uh, sorry, bicycle lane, we keep doing that, you mentioned that, I'm, we keep calling it a bus lane, wow, lorry drivers are brave, okay, Stig, very good defensive driving there, well done, as soon as he saw the lorry go round the back of the bus, immediately mirror checked to see who was behind him, applied the brakes, being a defensive driver, giving space for that oncoming lorry to pass. You know, it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. We're exercising caution, being a defensive That's driver. The case of, uh, don't assume right away. Yes, don't assume right away. Ah! <laughs>
I we got see. him! I did see him. We got him! I know you saw him. It, it beeps at 20. Yes, it beeps at 20. We all know it beeps at 20. Don't we stick? So I got it right. <laughs> okay. Now it's very difficult to keep this speed. And I've the said other, it before. The other point is I couldn't slow it on straight away because of the car behind me. Any more excuses, Stick? If you look in the mirror, you can see them. Yep. <laughs> Any more? So I did slow it on at the right time. Okay. I have to defend myself. Are you going to stop there now or do <laughs> you want to keep digging a hole? <laughs> I have to remind the examiner that I did it at the right time. Good, it's good, man. I like that. Roundabout, no directions are given. You follow the road ahead. So if the examiners are quiet, you follow the road ahead. Nice, good observations, good speeds. Got a blocker car. So the gray car that went straight across the roundabout stops the traffic on the right from going. Stig's using that as an advantage so that he can actually go at the same time that that car enters the road, we enter the road, and then we just pass each other. And the traffic on the right can't go, so we get an opportunity to go. Those are blocker cars, really good, like I said earlier, uh, good information to have, but putting it into practice is another, another story. Well done here, Stig. So Stig couldn't go around because he had a, quite a few hazards on the right, somebody trying to reverse out onto the road, then an oncoming car, um, not enough space to go round the bicycle, so stick held back, waited, the road got wider, the bicycle moved out of the way. If we were here, some, yes. you wouldn't have to go over to take the point. No, because you've got your double solid lines there. So we talked about the solid line for the bicycle lane back there, but we now have a solid line in the middle of the road. And solid lines, if they're on your side or they're next to your vehicle, mean do not cross, okay? There are some very rare exceptions, like road works, and then you have signs telling you what to do, uh, etc. But unless it's some situation similar to the one I just described, you don't cross solid lines. And we're still on a 20 mile an hour road. So the bicycle is actually pretty much, and he's not even pedaling fast, is he? Look, he's doing the same speed as us, 20 miles an hour. So cars have now been reduced down to the same speed as a leisurely pace on a bicycle. That's interesting. Now, what do you feel the need is for a 20 mile an hour? I just I don't get that. It's a wide road, good visibility, plenty of space between the pavements. Turn right the traffic lights, please, Stick. Good mirrors, good signal, good position. And we've got a speed change there, okay? Um, now we addressed this on a previous video. Uh, speed changes are awfully in junctions. Talking about this junction, if you did need to wait, make sure you take your time, wait, take your position in the center of that junction, and then make sure there's no oncoming traffic before you turn, as it's incredibly difficult to see the oncoming traffic did at that junction. Did you say it was 30, so you changed your 20? Yeah, I did, it. I did it again, didn't it? So in my defense, if you rewind the video, there's a big 30 sign there where I said it's changing, but as soon as we come in here, it's 20 again. There's no big sign there to show us it's, you're entering into a 20 zone. Anyways, okay, so you can see how the speed limit signs and junctions, a little bit confusing, keep looking for signs. So how did you know it was still a 20 once you did your turn? On the road. Okay, so stick saw a sign. So that's how important it is. That's the second junction in Isleworth where we've had that happen. Okay, Stig's exercising caution here, was ready to stop in case that vehicle merged out onto the main road. Uh, we've got a zebra crossing, Stig's done his interior mirror check. He's started to address his speed to allow the ladies time to finish using the crossing so he doesn't need to stop. So that's a nice skill set as well. If we see a uh, hazard coming up in the distance, excuse me, then you can start to adjust your speed early that way you won't have to stop when you get there I'm that's going to stop on the left right? okay so stick is pulling in all the cues of the cars <laughs> this is what i do when i go on holiday so I'm a, I'm a foreigner driving in a different country causing a huge queue of traffic like this i pull over and stop let the huge queue of traffic go by this is good information to have so that you don't feel as anxious because it's a horrible feeling isn't it to have that sure. queue of traffic so behind you, you. Get stressed out. yeah um so Stig's doing that just to some, relieve congestion some good examiners were pulling you up on the left anyway and let them go by yeah, yeah. 
Okay, um, stick not but doing just, anything wrong there. Just a quick tip. If yep. you find that you've got someone on your tail and putting pressure on you, it's better to just pull up on the left and let them pass you. Okay, there you go. So if there's something you want to do, just mention it to your examiner, and maybe. just tell them you're going to pull up on the left and the reason you're going to pull up on the yeah. left. Yeah, so you can ask your examiner to pull up on the left for other reasons other than, you know, we've been doing 20 miles an hour, everybody's doing 30 miles an hour, regardless of the speed no, limit. It's right on my tail. Yeah. So, you know, Stig wants to pull over, but he's mentioned it to the examiner. You see, he said to me, before he did it, he's an advanced driver, but he told me he's getting a two-way conversation involving me. I feel part of what's happening. Therefore, I'm more likely to take part and, and you know, encourage Stig to do what he needs to do and, and have an understanding as well. So Stig said, look, I'm going to pull over onto the left to let everybody by. Okay, cool. Thank you. If you want to pull over to the left, just choose a safe place and go ahead. Uh, so the other reasons you could do it, if you're wearing a face mask, your glasses are fogging up. You need to pull over and stop to defog your glasses. If you're feeling sick, if you're not too sure about a show me, tell me question, and you want to relocate the actual button that you're being asked to show, then you can ask the examiner, I forgot, I don't know. Um, do you mind if I pull up on the left? Yes, by all means. And then you locate the button. Later on on the test, you'll be asked to do the show me question again. Good, that way you'll know where the button is. is look in the, in, the, in the windows. Okay, so uh, what Stiggy's doing is he's using the reflection off of the shop windows to see, really good tip there, to see if the oncoming traffic is coming. Um, see, this is the other problem here. Yeah. Yep. What, what was, um, what was the challenge there, Stig? As you speed out, if they're on the board. Yep. Then all of a sudden, someone could be crossing. Yes. That is very common. And another thing that can be added to that is there's a car in front of you. Yep. And that car is going to obscure your view of the pedestrian crossing, where the pedestrian is crossing. That car suddenly stops. We can't see why it's stopping. And then we boom, bang into the back of that car. Very common at that roundabout. What's that high street called, please, Dick? I think that's the... Witten. Witten High Street. So that's Witten High Street, very close to the test centre. Um, a very important junction, like Stig said, look for the reflections off of the shop windows or park cars or bus stops, whatever has a reflective surface. That gives Stig the advantage now because he can see if the traffic's coming to the right where the visibility is impaired. Uh, and now he can make a safe decision on when to go. And be patient. Be patient, look across the junction, across the roundabout, as it's very common to have a zebra crossing at roundabouts so be prepared to stop as you exit the roundabout for the pedestrian crossing very very good information thanks for that stick right how are you doing with your 20 mile an hour perfect lovely that's what we like to hear just like a robot programmed okay um now you can actually program your cars a lot of people do ask this question on a side note as the technology is coming a lot more into cars where they're almost completely driverless. That's how far you know we're going into technology. Um, you're not allowed to use any technology on your driving test that controls the car for you. Speed. Yeah, controls the speed, controls even the steering now. Self-parking. Yeah. And you're not allowed to use these driver aids, but what you are allowed to use are the visual aids and the audio aids. So the visual aid as in the speed limit of the, of the road, we have that displayed for us um, in case we don't see the signs that might be beneficial. Um, and then we have the audio aid, which is the actual warning chime if we reach or exceed the speed limit. how you set it. Yeah, how you set it. I've, I've set mine at the speed limit. Same. Yeah. So that, that way, if you're a student driving in the vehicle that we provide you, then you're going to have that warning chime go bing bong. Just and, remind you that you have the yeah. speed. Yeah. Now, I've had lots. I don't know if you've had this. Have you? Uh, traffic lights turn left, please. We're going to, this is Twickenham Stadium. We're going to go back towards the test center now. Have you had the exam? has mentioned that at the end of the test, if you didn't have that warning chime going off, you may have failed your driving test. If you had them it say something, yeah, it saved a lot of people. Especially on roads like this one that we're on, where it's like 20 for like a mile, 
I mean, how tempting is it to try well, it's and... 20 all the way from the other end. Yeah. Right. Now, I know there was a 30 sign, and then we turned, and it went into a 20. I can't remember where that junction was. Is it here, isn't it? I think there was one somewhere near so the test center. This is... No. So, there you see the problem. So, we've got a 20 reminder sign up on, like, for a giant, right, over there on the lamppost. I literally car, just see it. Technology is telling you 30. And then cars send us right. Now that one's an easier sign to see 20. So always go by the last speed limit sign that you've seen. If you don't see any change, stay at that speed. Yes. Okay, so just to reiterate what Stiggy said, if you don't, actually, I don't even if you don't know see any said. change. Don't see any change. Stay at that speed limit. Stay at that speed limit. There we go. This is it. This is what I was talking about. So, 30, so, so, you can, you can so I said, <laughs> go by the last speed I, limit sign you saw. I can take the at 30, and then as soon as I hit 30, I have to break. So we're going to go by 30. And then what was your advice about the speed signs? Stay up. If you don't, if you don't see any change, oh, then, 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 then stay at that speed limit. Okay. So a change there, there is a so. change there. Yeah. So I didn't see that one last time when we turned here, but I did see this one on the road. So, so the good so, thing is the car should have read those ones. Yeah. So they, I think the camera reads the signs. That's what it's supposed to do, isn't yeah, it? I don't think it does. I those think are it, too small. I th no, I so think it high. works off of the GPS. No, so when the system's updated, ah, I think it's a load of baloney. Okay, I'll show you. Okay. Stiggy's going to prove to me that the car has eyeballs, ladies and gentlemen, and it can see and think for itself, which I do believe, but I just don't believe Stig. <laughs> no, but saying now, saying that, there's so many things on this car. I got taught a new one today, didn't I, by holding that button down. That I didn't know that Stig's actually teached me. So he's got lots and lots of good information. Right, lovely mirror checks there for your change of direction. We're coming back towards the test centers. You can see these roads with these speed bumps in the middle, uh, not particularly pleasant. Um, don't put one wheel on each side to make it smooth unless you have a situation like this where we're keeping one meter from the left. And that conveniently puts us in that position where we can get one wheel on each side of the bump, making it nice and smooth for the passengers, i.e. the examiner. But if you need to go over the bump awkward, make it rough for the examiner. Right, yeah. as long, yes, turning right, second exit. As long as you're keeping a meter from the left, you are perfect. Okay, nice, good observations there. Good speed on the approach, going from a running to a jogging to a walking as we approach junctions so that we can see if it's safe and make a good decision on whether we can proceed. Uh, look at this road. It's just an absolute nightmare, this road. But you can't really escape it. You're going to get roads like this, you know, at every test center. Um, every test center I can think of, you're going to have a situation yeah, like this. The good thing here is all 20. Yeah, it's all 20, yeah. So we're doing 18 miles an hour. Um, as an experienced driver, uh, which Stiggy clearly is, I feel very safe um, because he's keeping that meter from the left. But usually for inexperienced drivers, if they're driving at 20 miles an hour, keeping this can be difficult. So Stig's saying use your reference point. So can you see the white line running down the center of the video, that center line? center white line that is running into the bottom right hand corner of the video but conveniently looks almost exactly the same as what the driver can see which is the white line is running into the corner of your windscreen now if that line is in that position you are in your lane correctly if that line is out of that position, then you are out of, and you would see it change there as Stiggs had to go in and out and cars park yeah, side. to provide space for the oncoming traffic. So um, that's a good reference point for lane discipline. Uh, sometimes, according on how big the park vehicles are here on the left, that might not work, like now, because right. now we have to be a meter from the park cars, which actually makes us go over that center line. So always remember that meter from the left. I find that that is a way that you cannot go wrong. 
if you always keep a meter from the left, you can't go wrong. Whether you stay in or out of road markings, it's where you need to be, so you can't go wrong. But with the road markings, although they're very good teaching aids for lane discipline, it depends on the don't, circumstance. Don't, don't always rely on reference points. Yeah, don't rely on reference points. But don't rely on anything you're ever taught when you're learning to drive. It's there to help you. <laughs> it's there as a guide, yes. It's an assistant. Okay? Right, round about turning right, and we're going on the circle because we don't want to go up the pavement, okay? So, again, advice, if you've been watching this series of videos, which we've done throughout multiple driving test centers so far, lots of good information, hearing the same information over and over again, often by my students, is something that they say they like until the point where they probably heard me say it a million times before. But it's my profession, so that's what I do. I keep saying the same information, relevant information, over and over again. So hopefully it gently sinks in to the point where you're hearing my voice on your driving test, and that way you've got that information to hand when you need it, obviously giving you the best possible chance of passing your driving test first time. Okay, so we're almost back at Fleming Way. Now, I've had a few people, right, at this roundabout, not see it. And fail. Yeah, and fail. Yeah. Because 30, 30 seconds before they finish. Yes, because they, they probably are aware that they're back, because they might know where they are, and then not actually see the roundabout. I've had that happen so many times here. Why do you think people... Oh, because the examiners don't say anything. They say, okay, follow the road ahead and then take the next right into Fleming Way. Or it's back quite hard the... to miss this one, to be honest. Yeah, it is. It's, it's reasonably, you know, paint's good. The signs are here. Even the shape. Visible, the the shape, yeah. Um, but something that happens, um, take the next road on the right into Fleming Way, back to the driving test centre. A nice position here, Stig, nice and close to the centre line, waiting until you reach the centre line of this new road. And then I'd like you to turn into the test centre here, please. Like we've mentioned on the other videos, take your time when you're going in and out of test centres. Slow on the entry, slow on the exit, because there's multiple hazards usually at entrance and exits to test centres. So just take your time. You don't want to get any of the pigeons. You'll get a minor fault. I pushed the button now and stopped the camera. Go on, stick. So you wouldn't fail for being a few miles an hour over the speed limit. You wouldn't fail if you're slightly over the speed limit. Yeah. Provided you yeah. came back to the correct yeah. speed limit. So you showed the examiner that you've noticed and, and you're addressing that speed. and bringing it so down. So don't panic if you think you've gone over the speed limit. Yep. Don't worry. Yep. Just come back to the correct speed limit yep. and continue. Yep. Yep, because totally examiner correct. will not fail you for yep. that. That's very good, important information. So this is the part of the test if if me and Stig did accidentally push the button to turn the cameras off, uh, where I would say, or the examiner would say, all right, that's the end of your test. Uh, how do you feel it went, Stig? Obviously, we just had that reply from Stig there. And I would like to say, on the basis of what Stig's just said, totally correct. Congratulations, you have passed your driving test. I have been Scott. This has been a successful Stig again. Maybe I'll, I'll get him next time. Um, stay safe, stay tuned, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.